everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. Today, we'll start the day at the beginning. <laughs> I guess good that's a good, good place to start. Makes you think of a song. There's a very good place to start. Let's see. Start from the very beginning. Yeah, it's from it's from um, from Sound of Music. <laughs> If you if you um, sing, you begin with do re mi. If you if you do the alphabet, it's a b c or something like that. A b c one two three, do re mi. That song, that's the one that I was thinking of. Had start at the very beginning. Well, today the temperature was up in near forty. It really was in the forty. I think it was in. I it, think it was up in, up in the forties. Yeah, yeah, because when you went out to um, nice and to expand the chicken fence. My chickens are even happier today than they were yesterday. <laughs> if chickens could be happy. Today, oh, they're happy. They're happy. Today, Jim was saying that somebody at his work was saying that we weren't going to get any really cold temperatures until the middle of January, which would be wonderful. So he said maybe he could expand the chicken fence for my chickens so that they can get out of the dirt area and more into the grass area. So if he was willing to go outside and do that, I was willing to let him. <laughs> so he opened up the, the gate that he made the other day where he put the four panels up. He actually swung it over and put in one of the electric fences. It's not electrified because the snow area is still there. There's still snow. But as soon as he got it up, those chickens, the buffs, they went walking out towards the grass and they were like, oh, there's the invisible line is gone. And they walked and it was like single file. Each of them were going. And then finally the, um, that almost was another song, so I, I won't do it. <laughs> because everything I say sounds like a song in my head. Um, but the buffs went out first, and then the next group of went out, and then the two younger ones, they flew out of the, the enclosed area, and they went to join the rest of them in the grass. Then Jim came back, and they all come waddling, running back up to the, the um, enclosed area. They're afraid of him. When I go out, they think there's food. With him, they think there's danger. So they um, came back into the, the enclosed area. Then after a while, after he was out there for a while, they decided, well, he's no problem. So let's just go out and eat some more of that nice green grass and whatever we find in it. So that's what they did. They had a good time. Now, I had a few questions about whether I have seen or met Ronald McDonald. Actually, I have. I met a Ronald McDonald, but I don't know if you realize that there's a lot of Ronald McDonald's out there, and they have to go to Ronald McDonald School to become a Ronald McDonald. And there's a criteria that they have to um, meet. They have to be a certain height and a certain size, and um, they got to be bubbly and crazy. Certain temperament. So yes, certain temperament. He said. In case you didn't hear. <laughs> yeah. And also, I want you to show, I'm going to show you a picture of me with, um, oh, wait a minute. Ronald McDonald is right here. I'm putting him in now. <laughs> Um, the Easter rabbit and me, that picture's going in right here. And the um, Santa Claus one. I do have, I'm going to show you the one with the real Santa Claus and his wife. And now you're going to see me dressed as an elf.
I, in fact, Santa liked my outfit so well that he got his camera out and took a picture of my outfit because he said his elves didn't have as nice of an outfit. Mine is just my old um, majorette. I used to be a majorette. Oh, here comes another something I did. I used to twirl baton, and I was pretty darn good at it. And at the time that I that I tried out for majorettes, there was a, a large baton twirling group that was in our town, and they were called the Westerners. Well, this group had a lot of kids in it that had been twirling for many, many years, and they were really good. And the school decided that they would have a, um, a majorette team. So you had to try out for it. And when we tried out, only about six people could be on it. Just like when I was a cheerleader, only six kids. Now they let everybody do it. But um, I tried out for majorettes. And my sister and I were trying out. And um, we had a pat that if I made it and she didn't, then I'd refuse to be, then I would, you know, give up my spot. And if she made it and I didn't, then she would give up her spot because we didn't think that my mom would drive us to the school for practices, which was a good five miles away, which was a far distance for us because we lived in the country and we had a lot of um, chores and things to do. So it was kind of an inconvenience to go. But if there was two of us going, we felt like she would take us. Well, we tried out. And I remember when we twirled, uh, we learned by watching a TV show. You may remember and you may not, um, in, Can in um, Canada, there was a show called Tiny Talent Time. And they, um, the kids on there at the time were really amateurs, real amateurs. Not like today's kids where you watch them and you're going, oh my goodness, I would never in a million years be able to do what they're doing. But the kids in this show, when I was watching, they were showing, like when they tap danced, I could learn the tap dance step because it was so slow. The shuffle, shuffle, tap, tap was so easy. And the ballet was so, everything was easy. And so twirling the baton was easy too because I could watch and learn from their slow, uh, juvenile kind of doing it. So we practiced and practiced and practiced. Well, when it came time for trying out, the Westerners were all there. And they thought, sure, they were a, they were a shoe in They were going to get the positions. Well, when I got it, they were shocked. And then my sister Anita got chosen too. And they were double shocked. And we had no twirling experience other than Tiny Talent Time. We were not on the Westerners um, twirling team. And they used to do competitive twirling. They used to go and marching bands, and they were they were a competitive group. And it was actually quite amazing that we were able to do that. So, anyways, the Santa Claus outfit. Oh boy, I went all away from far from that. The little outfit that I wore as my elf outfit was actually my majorette outfit, and that's the green dress that I that I wore. And we had to have them made. And people wear lollies now underneath their, I think they're called lollies, under their cheering outfits. We had regular underwear that we had it dyed. So you had to have underwear that was dyed. It was cotton underwear. So that we had a green, something green underneath so that if we did our kicks, you only saw green again because our school colors were green and white, and so we wore green and white. We had white majorette boots for marching, and we had green dresses, our string green jumper dresses on. I don't think we had, I think it was bare arms, which I don't like to do bare arms. Never liked my arms. Another, another dislike, I guess. I had arms that were like a boy's. I had muscles that were unbelievable. I was born too early in, in times of now people like those really sculptured arms. When I was young, to have a sculptured arm was not very girly. It was really more boyish. But eh, I guess I was a tomboy at, and I had muscle arms because of the, probably because of my, um, we used to play hard and the, and the type of things we did caused me to have 
good muscles. Plus, my father had really good muscles, and it must have been hereditary. So that's probably where that came from. Oh, I'm getting a call. I guess we'll say goodbye, and I'll talk to you all again tomorrow. Bye-bye.